take a look at yourself. Do you, do you enjoy pants? Does anybody? Today, we're going to talk about how to be productive and how to finally figure out that whole work from home thing. By the way, today's video is sponsored by Trademore. So when the pandemic hit and I, along with everyone that I work with, was told to go home indefinitely, I was kind of psyched. I had no idea the scope of this thing. I thought that we might be home for a couple of weeks, which seemed kind of cool. I had visions of, you know, rolling out of bed at eight o'clock on the dot and doing my work from my couch with my dogs next to me. So for the first couple of weeks of stay at home work, I worked from my couch in my pajamas with my dog and my coffee. And you know, the world was a little scary, but it was okay. I was lucky enough to be able to keep my job during this crisis. And I can't tell you how grateful I am for that. If you didn't know, I am a communications coordinator at Texas A&M University. University and I do writing and photography and I run social media for one of the colleges there. I really enjoy what I do and it was a very strategic career move to get me into this place. I really enjoy it. I enjoy my team, I enjoy my office, I enjoy how I'm treated, and I enjoy that the hours allow me to work on Budget Girl, which is what you're watching here, my small business, at home in my off time. So because I run a whole small business at home in my off hours, I of course thought, you know, it's not gonna be an issue to work at home. I already do a ton of work at home, just not for my office. Let's have uh, just a moment to reflect on how stupid and naive I was there. So like many people, the longer that I was at home, it increasingly became more and more difficult to be productive. I got distracted by my boyfriend, the dogs crying, the dishes, the everything. And add that in with the stress of kind of being trapped in my home didn't really do great things for my productivity. To be honest with you, I still don't have it 100% figured out. But here are some things that I have learned and that have helped and I sincerely hope they will help you too if you are in any sort of weird work situation, either temporarily or permanently. Tip number one, ignore any advice that doesn't work for you. Yep, even mine. I did the same thing that I'm sure a lot of people did at the top of this pandemic. I scoured articles about adjusting to work from home and tried to implement all of the tips and I quickly realized that though work from home has existed for a very long time, work from home in a pandemic is kind of new. And the tips that apply to regular people who are trying to figure out how to work from home in a normal world might not necessarily work now. For instance, our normal work from home recommendations would say to get fully dressed up and made up every single day, regardless of whether you leave the house. I work better without pants on and that's the end of it. In fact, I consider being able to choose what I wear for work at home being one of the only perks of the thing, aside from continuing to get an income in the state of an international crisis that tons of people are super affected by. So I rarely put on makeup for work anyway, and I am certainly not going to get gussied up for the dogs. Yeah, my boyfriend lives here. He knows what it looks like without anything on. He's just gonna have to deal with it. Especially when it's not like, you know, after the work day is over, hey, I'm already dressed. I already have some makeup on. I can go out into the world and like see people and it'll make it more of a motivation for me to get my work done during the day to like get all dressed up so I can, you know, shoot off after work and like go out into the world. No, nobody's leaving. What's happening? Why would you put on makeup for this? I have spent the entirety of this quarantine in pajamas, activewear, loungewear, or nothing at all, and I regret zero. There are perks to everything. In when I'm going into my office, I get free coffee. That's a perk. When I stay at home, I don't have to put on pants. Done. So tip number two, figure out where you can work best. Once again, traditional advice states that you need to set up like a permanent home office and have a desk and do the same thing that you would do at work every day to kind of trick your brain into working there. I spend most of my time with my laptop on the couch, feet elevated, dog next to me, drink to my left, and it's fine. <laughs> 
However, I did need a desk for some things and that led into some problems. So I can be somewhat productive on my couch, especially for kind of like easy things like scheduling social media posts and designing those and doing some other kind of administrative work. But for kind of the deep work that I have to do and of course for Zoom calls and meetings, interviews and stuff like that, I do need an actual desk to sit down at and a somewhat professional background to look at. Where you're seeing me now is a farce. <laughs> This is a desk, <laughs> but it is an antique desk meant for like writing letters home from the war or reverse that. This thing is from like the 50s and <laughs> it does not work well for modern day work. Instead of the way most desks are now where you sit in the center of the desk underneath it, this is so it's set off to the far right. So I actually can't, my, my arm just kind of keeps falling off of it if I put my chair where it's supposed to be, which is way over on the right and it's just horribly uncomfortable. So I use this for like filing and storage and as a background for these videos, but I don't use it as a desk. <laughs> and the kitchen table, which is where a lot of people have ended up working, was long ago taken over by Jacob who's also working from home and he does a really fun thing where it's like he's trying to eviscerate the keyboard as he's typing so it shakes the table and we can't share or I would kill him. Are you listening to me? Yeah. <laughs> I type forcefully because it helps me get my point across. So while I rarely do this, I coughed up some money to solve the problem. I ended up purchasing this really cute ladder desk off of Facebook Marketplace for just $20. And it was being sold because the original buyer installed the shelf that you put your laptop on wrong and it wouldn't lie flat. And I fixed that in about a minute with a screwdriver. It fits into a really small corner of my dining room and kind of angles towards the window where I have all of my beautiful plants. So it creates a really professional looking back background for Zoom calls and I don't have to worry about anyone or anything um, kind of walking through the rest of the house and distracting people. It also makes me sit up straight for just a little bit and engage my back muscles which I'm sure are slightly atrophying and the shelf that I put my laptop on folds up so I can put any of my work stuff that I need to store away or can't stand to look at anymore away when the workday is done and just visually forget about it. So very rarely will I throw money at a problem to fix it, but in this case, it was $20 well spent. Tip number three, utilize the extra time to improve your environment. I ended up cleaning out all of my drawers and kind of refolding and organizing and donating or getting rid of anything that doesn't fit or that I don't wear anymore. Uh, some stuff I cleared out of my closet and I sold it. Uh, other stuff I donated. Essentially, I did big purges. I cleaned out my shed. I cleaned out my car. I cleaned out this desk. And when I cleaned out the desk, I found old cell phones that are just, to me, trash that I am storing for no apparent reason, mostly out of environmental guilt, not throwing them away and wanting to recycle them properly. So here's where our sponsor entered. Trade More, if you don't know, provides customers with the ability to purchase and trade in used cell phones and tech devices like these. Every single person I know does this when we decide to upgrade for whatever reason, either because we broke it or something, shiny new phone. We keep the old one. And in my head, I generally say like, well, if the new one breaks, I'll have this as a backup. But you know what? If the new one breaks, I'm upgrading. I'm not going back to like an ancient, I think this is a seven and this is an eight. We're just hoarding old cell phones and essentially creating a graveyard for them. Where Trademore comes in is that they will actually purchase these off of you and you can earn money. So here's how you do it. You just go to the what's my phone worth section on trademore.com. There will be a link down below and you select what type of phone you have. This is an iPhone 8. So I click the iPhone and then the iPhone 8 and then I tell them a little bit about the color, make, model, and condition. This phone, for instance, is shattered. So this is poor condition. <laughs> It's like five questions, select buttons, and then they give you an offer on your phone. They offered me $55 for this little guy. And then what you do is you just put in your address 
and they will send you a little box. Put your phone in with a prepaid label. You send it back and they will give you the amount that your phone is worth via either a gift card or PayPal. Voila, your trash, your decluttered little phone graveyard trash can put some money in your pocket. And everybody's happy. It's a win, win, win. So check out Trade More below. I'm super happy to work with them. I've done it before and you guys love them. I had several of you guys say that you tried them out, that you got some money from just your cell phone graveyard sitting in your desk and you were super happy to have that cash. Also, these things just become worth less and less the longer you have them. So you might as well just trade them in now because you're not gonna use them again. Thank you to Trade More for sponsoring this video and you can learn more about them and how much your old phones are worth at the link below. Tip number four, use timers. So due to the nature of the type of work I do, I can't really keep a very clear block schedule and I've always kind of eschewed the thought of Pomodoro timers or other like really structured work days because it seems like no matter how much I plan out my day, <laughs> um, just new stuff falls in constantly all the time and you know I get pulled off onto projects and have to help people and that's all fine and I enjoy kind of the fun chaos of my work but for that reason I've always been like <laughs> but at home I wasn't being able to keep track on the running to-do list or do any of the deeper work that required you know like 30 plus minutes of like dedicated focus and no distractions because the dishes were piling up and Jacob was coming in and wanting to show me wombats on his phone or the dogs were crying because they wanted to go out or suddenly, you know, the house just looked insane because we're trapped in it 24 seven and that makes it get a lot dirtier. So I ended up trying a shortened version of the Pomodoro method, which if you haven't heard of it before, essentially it's to try to do really dedicated deep work for like 25 minutes at a time with breaks of five minutes in between between and then after so many of those you get a longer break now to me as kind of a creative person that sounds incredibly structured and ruly and impossible because <laughs> I'm distracted easily and I enjoy working in a team and communicating but at home <laughs> I wasn't getting the deeper work done and I needed to try something so I tried this and surprisingly it worked now I don't do Pomodoros all day every day that would drive me insane but I have been doing a few in a row when I need to get some longer form work done. You can use something like a kitchen timer. The Pomodoro app costs $5 and I'm cheap. So I downloaded an app called Clear My Mind Productivity and it's the same thing as the Pomodoro app. It automatically does a 25% task timer and then with this done, it starts a five minute break timer and then asks you if you wanna do another Pomodoro or not. Um, and this has been really, really nice. So what I'll do to make this work most effectively is I will minimize all the tabs that I don't need for this very specific thing. I will open up my phone, I will start this timer, and then I will work until the timer is done. And anytime I feel like distracting myself and like picking up my phone to look at Instagram, I see the timer counting down. And every time I try to maybe open a, uh, another minimized tab, it I see the timer and I'm like, oh, well I only have, you know, 17 minutes left, 10 minutes left, five minutes left. And it encourages me to just keep going. And it actually starts to get to the point where you're like, how much work can I do in the four minutes that I have left? And then in the five minute break, I end up standing up, going to check on Jacob, going to check on the dogs, maybe often even like picking up something or cleaning up because I'm already on that kind of productivity roll and it works really really well also if something tries to distract me during that time I can say like I'll be with you in 10 minutes or however long it is left highly recommend you try it don't resist the urge to clean your environment now this is completely anti what all of the work at home articles say but here's what happened with COVID <laughs> my boyfriend me and two dogs were trapped in this apartment and we were only really allowed to leave for groceries for months. Now normally we do cleaning on the weekends. Like we'll kind of pick up things. I'm a fairly tidy person, but all of the deeper stuff, you know, big pickup, laundry, deeper cleans, dusting, bathrooms, everything like that gets done just on the weekends when we have time. And the house generally doesn't get that messy during the week, but things kind of pile up throughout the week and you clear them out at the weekend, you start the week fresh. 
that's the way I've kind of always done it and it's fine. But <laughs> when you're trapped in the house all day, every day, and everyone is there, the house gets messy a lot faster. And if we had waited until the weekend, it might have been like a hoarder situation. And I just was going to go mad because in general, apparently, I am the type of person that can't really work unless things are fairly clean and tidy or else I will pro to clean and not do the thing that I'm supposed to do until I clean the other things. So when the house gets messy a lot faster, I feel like I have to kind of clean all the time. And I let that frustrate me at first. I tried to tell myself like, don't do it until five o'clock. You know, you need a very structured work day. And then I just decided to not do that and kind of pick up throughout the day as I went using either little breaks or multitasking. For instance, I guarantee you that over the past couple of months, if I had to attend a Zoom meeting that was like training based or it was just like a lecture or something that I had to listen to, that you did not need to see my face and I did not need to participate. While I was listening to that, I was doing my dishes or folding laundry. <laughs> I used Pomodoro breaks, I used my lunch break to keep my home environment clean, which kept me on the whole a little happier, a little saner, and just a little more prepared to actually do the work at hand. And the final tip, number six, use the time to make your home more beautiful or to tackle projects that have been long time coming. While being home has been stressful and distracting, I have been able to tackle a bunch of very creative projects that are going to make my home, both now and the one that I have just purchased, link to check out that video down below, a lot more beautiful. Things that would normally take like a whole week to do and me just not being willing to commit a whole weekend to one project and actually be done throughout the week if you're staying at home in little breaks and lunch breaks and in the evening and it can feel like it goes really fast because a lot of times when you're working on a project especially one where you're like painting or sanding or staining or it's something like a furniture piece a lot of the time is spent waiting on stuff to dry. For instance, this uh, kitchen island slash coffee table, I did a total refresh on. It has definitely seen better days and I ended up sanding it, painting it, and staining it all just on lunch breaks while I was working at home. It actually only takes like five or 10 minutes to do a coat of stain on the top or a coat of paint or spray down the knobs with some spray paint outside. And I could easily incorporate that into my days as I was working and it helped me kind of feel more productive in the home. I also refinished an old trunk that's been in my family for years that now looks absolutely gorgeous and I love it. And a super cheap outdoor plant stand that I transformed into that baby right there. There we go. <laughs> All of the info on that is on my Instagram actually in my stories and I cataloged the whole process of redoing those pieces if you want to go check them out at Go Budget Girl. I'm really excited about showcasing the finished products in my home and I don't think I would have gotten these done without being stuck at home for quarantine. I would love to know your tips for working at home, how, how have you managed during this time, and have you been able to get any projects done? I certainly appreciate you watching and thank you again to Trademore for sponsoring this video. Really appreciate it. I'm about to send this sucker in, make myself a little extra money, and I will see you guys next time. Or else I will pro class, pro, or else I will pro class, Plastic clean.